to another gauge tutorial from VIPGages.com. So recently I released a few gauges um, that do some like airport approaches and I'll be releasing some soon where you can do some takeoffs as well both for planes and helicopters. Now in all of these gauges you have custom locations that you can create. Now I thought I'd create one tutorial which covers all of those gauges. So let's get started. Okay, so first off, if we go into the gauge list, and if we go down to the bottom of the gauge, this is where the custom entries are found. Okay, so you can see we have 10 custom entries for each gauge. Now what we need to do is we need to define what the variable is for each of these items that we need to configure. Now the variable names are different depending on which gauge, but in essence it's the same process to change the data and if by showing you one then you'll be able to do all of the others as well. Okay so the first thing we need to do is identify the variables we need to change and the easiest way of doing this is by just clicking on the show manual button for the gauge and this will open up the reference guide for the gauge from my website. Now at the bottom of my reference manuals you'll see a list of all the variables that are used by the gauge and the ones we're interested in is the custom location variables here. Okay so we have 10 custom locations and as you can see there is locations 0 to 9, you've got latitudes 0 to 9, longitude 0 to 9, heading blah blah blah. So what we're going to do is we're only going to be editing one location at a time so we only really need to search for the variables for the specific custom entry that we're looking for. So if I copy this part here, the FG Airport Capital Cities 00, zero and I search for that variable, then I'm going to get all the relevant variables for this particular custom location. So the next thing I need to do is once I've copied that to the clipboard, is go back to SPAD, click on the add-ons, uh, go into the data monitor, and then add data. And we need to paste what we've copied. And now you can see that it's showing us all the variables for custom zero. So we've got the altitude, heading, latitude, longitude, and the location. And if you want to edit location one, you just change the digit on the end to one, location six, and then you'll get the variables relevant to that particular entry in the gauge. So let's go back to zero, and I'm gonna highlight all of those variables and hit okay. And it'll put all those variables now into spad.next. So we can now edit these variables just by simply uh, double clicking on them. So my starting altitude is going to be 3000 feet. Um, I'm going to set my heading to 90 degrees. Um, and the location is going to be Darren's location number one. That would do. Okay, so the longitude and latitude, you're going to need to get that data from your SIM by whatever means you want. However, I do provide a tool to edit your locations, and I'm going to show you how that works now in case you want to use that. Okay, so this is my uh, little repositioning tool that I've created for my takeoff and approach gauges. And you can see the current latitude and longitude is displayed in this gauge. And these are the values you would need to enter into my custom longitude and latitude. Um, so you can use any slew tool that you prefer to use. And once you have your plane location set, you can take your latitude and longitude values and put them into the custom. But I'm going to very briefly show you how this tool works. So I'm currently at Gatwick Airport and I'm on the ground. But what I want to do is I want to create an approach to this runway. And it can be any runway anywhere, obviously. So you need to pick a view that works probably better than this. And I tend to go for the um, outside and top down initially so that I can get an idea of where I am and the orientation I need to be. So here's my aircraft in the middle. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically put an approach on this runway here. So first off is I want to get it lined up with the runway. So I'm going to use my left and right dials to change the longitude and latitude. Now pressing the S6 will toggle to mode 1 and left and right dials now change heading and altitude. So you just need to toggle between modes 1 and 2 depending on what you want to set. Now S1 changes the move speed. Now at the moment it's set to the lowest 
and it means that the aircraft will barely move so at the moment I am moving the aircraft but it's so small you can adjust it you know in very small um, amounts in feet so if I zoom in to the airplane you can see how little that aircraft is moving but it does mean that you can fine tune it quite nicely and you can use the buttons here uh, for rotating the aircraft so I can turn it and I can reposition it move it forwards and backwards now the button, the dials do longitude and latitude not necessarily up down left and right as per your view so it does take a little bit of getting used to as to which direction to uh, twiddle the dials it is a bit trial and error so let's zoom out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the move speed so it's much quicker so now I can move out much faster so I can move my aircraft out obviously I need to zoom out some more so I can see where I'm going and I'm just going to whack the aircraft out if I hold this one it will go even faster so I'm somewhere about there let's zoom out and see how my approach is looking yeah, a little bit more fine tuning something like that now I've got a rough distance I can work with I can now change the view back to the cockpit I obviously want to change my um, altitude okay so let's get a bit of height and obviously now I need to know where I'm going so I need to rotate back to the airport okay so now I've got a a better view of the airport approach I can again I can fine tune the approach I'll add a bit more height okay I mean that'd do for now I mean it doesn't have to be perfect so now I've got my longitude and latitude values and I can simply enter those into the gauge now okay so back in SPAD we now have these values we can edit so our latitude value and I can simply put in the value that's the latitude uh, longitude minus zero it is important to put the minus in if there is one okay and my heading is 253 At my altitude 1230 so I'm going to round that up to 1300 okay so now I've got my custom approach configured so uh, let's go and test it so here now you can see the custom location title that we gave it and what I'm going to do now is just select that now I'm back on the ground at Gatwick and then we hit our approach button and then you can see it's put it back at the perfect positioning that we were previously you can obviously just go in edit those variables and tweak them if you want to okay so briefly if you want to add another you just simply um, find out what the variables are in this case we want the O1 variant so you're going to need to go back to the data monitor you'll need to add your data and you'll need to put the variable that you're looking for in this case we're looking for uh, cities 01 so we find the custom variables add those to the data monitor and now we can edit those so we can put in Darren's location 2 and when you hit enter you can see that straight away added that data into there you can then just set your attitude your heading your longitude and latitude as you did with the other one and then you can continue doing that for all the other custom entries if you want okay so each of my approach and takeoff gauges are going to be slightly different so you may find for instance in the UK approaches there isn't an altitude setting because it's fixed for all of the airports within the UK because we're pretty flat here so there won't be a specific um, altitude per airport on that gauge um, so just bear in mind there's going to be some slight differences and obviously open the reference guide to each gauge to find out what the custom variables are that you need to edit um, and then just search for those and then just make the edits that you need the tool for changing the repositioning of the aircraft that's available free to be downloaded from my downloads page on my website 
um, it does require a approach or takeoff gauge for it to work. It's not going to work unless you have a approach or takeoff gauge loaded in SPAD as well. Um, regarding the um, repositioning gauge at time of recording this, there is a little issue where you can't adjust the attitude with the gauge while the plane is sitting on the ground. It just refuses to lift. You can't increment the altitude while the aircraft is on the ground. So just get the aircraft in the air, then reposition it and you'll have no issues. Okay, so I hope you didn't find that too confusing, but if you have any questions then please do give me a shout. Um, and that's it for this one, so th thanks for watching. Please, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.